and I'm an event planner for the Orange County Library System. I plan many events, including our popular Cuisine Corner series, which features cooking demonstrations and instructions. Today, I wanted to show you how to make a simple, basic white bread loaf with just four ingredients. First, one and a quarter teaspoon salt, then one and three cups cool or room temperature water. And then we're just gonna put a quarter teaspoon yeast and sprinkle it over the surface of the water. We don't have to use that much yeast because we are letting this rise for a little bit longer than some of the videos you see. And we're just gonna let that yeast bloom for about two to three minutes. And we're just gonna give that a little stir and add three cups of flour. Now this can be bread flour or it can be all-purpose flour. Um, this recipe is not that delicate, so this also doesn't have to be sifted flour either. And just fold it until it comes together into a sticky, even consistency. So this is a little uh, drier than what we want, so we're going to add a little more water. At this point, I always find it easier to just use my hands. We can actually add just a little bit more water to that. You want it to be really sticky. And of course, if you go too far, you add too much water, you can just add a little bit more flour to balance it out. Now you just wanna leave this on the counter, cover it with a linen towel. Don't use terry cloth because the thighs can get in the dough and it can also stick pretty easily. You wanna leave that covered for about 12 to 18 hours until at least it has doubled in size and the surface is bubbly. All right, it's time to take a look. So as you can see, the surface has kinda of got brown and it has holes in it and that's what we're looking for and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to scrape this out onto the surface so we can shape it and you'll see the kind of stringy texture there and that's what you want that's what we're looking for that is developed gluten <clears throat> and that's how you know it's ready You can use a spatula if you don't have a bowl scraper, that's fine. So you want to put it on any kind of lightly floured surface, and you're also going to want to flour your hands so that you can work without, without it sticking. And fold it in, and what you're trying to accomplish here is you want to eventually get to a ball shape. So you're going to kind of fold in the edges and pinch it in. Now you're going to need some parchment paper. And make sure you get parchment paper and not wax paper. I've seen people make that mistake before. It can be very dangerous. So make sure you're using parchment paper, not wax paper. So we're going to take our, our ball here. Oh, I need more flour in my hands. So we're gonna take our ball here and try to get it up. Once you've gotten the parchment paper, you can try to shape it a little bit. And then you're gonna leave that to rise for one to two hours. As you can see, I've covered the loaf with a linen towel just to keep it from getting any kind of debris on it. About half an hour before the end of the second rise, you wanna turn the oven on to about 475 or the highest temperature that your parchment paper can take. 
My parchment paper can only take 425 degrees, so that's what I've set my oven to. Now you wanna get a Dutch oven. This is a cast iron Dutch oven with a lid, but you may have a ceramic one or something different at home. And you want to put that in the oven while it preheats. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you can bake this on a flat sheet, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. After the pan has been heating in the oven for 30 minutes, you are ready to transfer the bread to the oven. Now you want to just kind of press in with the floured finger about a quarter of an inch, and if that indentation stays in the bread, then you know it's ready. And if it's not doing that yet, give it about 15 more minutes to rise. Now you want to remove the Dutch oven from the oven very carefully because it's going to be very hot after staying there for 30 minutes. And then we're going to take the parchment paper and all and just drop it straight in there. Be very careful not to touch the Dutch oven. Put the lid back on. And put it back in the oven. And let that bake for 30 minutes. Now the reason we wanted the dough to be so wet and tacky is because it's going to steam inside of that Dutch oven and create a nice crisp crust. Now if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can put it on a baking sheet, but you want to put a metal pan below that with about a cup, a cup and a half of water, so it creates the steam in the oven and creates that nice crisp crunchy outside. After the bread has been baking for 30 minutes, you want to remove the top. Remember, be very careful, that's going to be very hot. And we're going to put it back in the oven. And we're going to leave that in for about 15 to 20 minutes until the top is golden brown. Okay, it's been about 18 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and take this out of the oven. Very carefully, it's going to be very hot. You can see inside there, nice golden brown. Turn the oven off, and you can lift this up by the parchment paper. Be careful not to touch the pan. and set it there to cool. It needs about an hour to two hours to cool fully. And now you have fresh homemade bread. I like the way this looks with all the crackles on top, but if you don't like that, or you want kind of a smoother surface, you can, right before you drop it in the Dutch oven, uh, just kind of like cut an X across the top of the dough, and that will help it direct the air that's escaping. So now we have a nice crusty outside and a soft inside. Thank you so much for watching. You can find out more about Cuisine Corner and see more videos at ocls.info slash cuisine corner. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect.